Oh, what do we got? What do we got? Oh, the Merwin Hulbert. Oh, this is great. Now, there are a number of people who will tell you that the Merwin Hulbert was the finest made revolver of the era. And a strong argument can be made for this. When you open a Merwin Hulbert revolver to eject the empty cases and release the barrel after opening, it pulls back automatically. Now, that is not spring-loaded. That is a function of the very close machining tolerances between the cylinder and the housing for the cylinder pin in the barrel and the cylinder pin itself. It's simply a suction that is created when the gun is opened. One of the most underrated guns of the Old West, really the Rodney Dangerfield of six guns, was the Merlin Hulbert. Now typically, guns in this era were named for their inventors. Turns out, Joseph Merwin was just a guy who sold these things. He was a guy who had a store in New York City. It was actually made by Hopkins & Allen, an old American gun company. But what's so cool about this gun, of course, is it's a double action. Double action means that one movement of the trigger both cocks the hammer and releases it to fire. They introduced a patented folding hammer to where this could be carried with the hammer down to prevent it snagging on uh, clothing. The really cool thing about the Merlin Hulbert is how it ejects. Press the latch on the bottom, you turn the whole barrel and cylinder, and you pull it forward and the cartridges drop out right here. When you listen to that sound, it's like opening a bank vault. That's just cool. Now, a number of the lawmen and outlaws of the Old West were taking their Smith & Wessons and their Colts and cutting down the barrels to get this type of compact revolver that was still very powerful in the big 44, 45 calibers, but could be carried concealed. Something about this design that you don't get with a single action army, you don't get with a 75 Remington. Different barrel lengths. Okay, this is the big horse pistol barrel. This, if you're a gunfighter, that's the barrel you want. And it's easy as opening it up, sliding the old barrel off, and putting a new barrel on. The majority of Merwin Hilberts produced had the traditional plow handle grip like the single action army. The pocket army models were offered with what has been called a skull crusher grip. And this turns the firearm into a very lethal hand club if the gun is empty. If somebody is struck on the head with that, that obviously is going to inflict a debilitating, if not lethal, wound. The Merwin and Hulbert really didn't get a lot of respect because it's not as sexy as the whole single action army. But technologically, it was a very advanced gun for its day. What happened to Merwin Hilbert? For many decades, there was a colorful and popular story that the principal of the company had gotten killed on a cross-country railroad trip. In actuality, what probably doomed the Merwin Hilbert Company was the same thing that made the Smith & Wesson Company, and that is a significant Russian military contract. Smith & Wesson's earlier contract with the Russian military was very successful, established the company, However, the later Merwin Hilbert contract reportedly resulted in a large number of revolvers delivered but never paid for. But the combination of those two things probably doomed the Merwin Hilbert company.